reaction type is a dissolving reaction. A dissolving reaction for sodium chloride solid looks like this. Take whatever it is that is dissolving and uh, break it up and or make it aqueous. So uh, make it so this time make it aqueous. And that I say make it aqueous, that means that everything on the product side will be aqueous. Sometimes you start and dissolve solids, liquids, or gases here. So this typically we will do solids, but that's not always the case. This is an ionic compound. We recognize it as an ionic compound because it has the metal in it or you recognize both as this. This is Na plus and Cl minus. Metal, non-metal also is a way to do it. And then you have to write your ions. And so that's why you have to know your ionic charges. Hopefully you know them at this point. That is a dissolving reaction for uh, sodium chloride. And you can see that both things here are aqueous. And since they're aqueous ions, that's what we put. And aqueous, we said, means dissolved in water. Let's tell you what that means now. So let's look at a sodium ion. And that sodium ion is floating around in solution, in aqueous solution, with um, chloride ions as well. But now, before I draw the rest of this, what's called a hydration shell for an aqueous species, we have to talk a little bit about water. And we will get back to this fact, but when we draw water, we will draw it with a bent shape. And we will notice that, or we will talk about how to do this, but we need this fact now. So this oxygen is partially negative, and this is a lowercase Greek letter delta, which means that it's partial, partial negative here. And if you want to know how I did that, so there's a couple ways to do it. I typically do it like this. It's like a squiggly D with a D at the bottom. I don't know. As long as you draw something that may, and put a minus sign next to it, I'm okay. This hydrogen is going to be partially positive. So is this hydrogen going to be partially positive? We'll talk again all about water coming up. And what we need to know, though, is that this partial negative of oxygen is attracted to the full-on plus one positive charge of sodium. And partial here just means a less than one, but greater than zero, or less than negative one. But, well, um, but not zero. So now when I draw this, or when you draw it, since this is a homework question, you're gonna draw the oxygen closer to the sodium because the oxygen is partially negative, and you're gonna draw a shell or a circle of them, four or five, like so, something like that. And this is a static or non-moving picture of a dynamic process. So in reality, these water molecules are moving around all the time, but on average, the oxygens are closer than the hydrogens to the sodium ion. So this is a picture of a hydration shell for sodium, and the oxygens have to be closer than the hydrogens. On the other hand, chloride ion is negative, and so uh, the hydrogens will be closer than the oxygens. And the exact picture is not it doesn't, oop, <laughs> try that again. So what you have to do is the water has to be bent, the hydrogens have to be closer. How you do that is up to you. That is a hydration shell for chloride ion. And that's why salt dissolves in water. The All of the waters four shown here, but that's not an exact number. But all of these partial charges are able to 
pull apart the full-on positive and negative charge in the ionic compound sodium chloride. So why do things dissolve? It's because, and so well in water, it's because water can surround it and break apart, break ions apart. Now, sodium chloride is what's called a strong electrolyte. My symbol for that is SE, S, so, or my, the right, capital S, capital E. Now let's talk about what a strong electrolyte is. A strong electrolyte dissolves in water and breaks up 100% into ions. So let's do a dissolving reaction for something else. This time we'll do magnesium chloride. It is a solid on the reactant side. I'm gonna write 100% on here as an added note that it breaks up 100%. It is a strong electrolyte. And I get magnesium two plus aqueous and two chloride ions, aqueous. Everything is aqueous on that product side. And since these are ions, that's what they go. Now, um, let's say a little bit more about this. If we had, if we started with one mole of MgCl2, we're saying it breaks up 100% So there's actually none of this left once it dissolves. Break some, so uh, no reactants left. And we have only products. And so it's gonna break up 100% into one mole of magnesium, two plus, and two moles of chloride minus. And when you add these up, they're actually three moles of ion particles. Okay? So uh, because you broke it down, it breaks up 100% into three pieces, now you have three times as many parts. And that's why in chemical reactions or in reactions chemical equations, the number of things that you start with and the number of things that you end with are not always the same, okay? So here we end up with three times as many ion particles than we started with before we dissolved. Okay, because and this is an important topic here. Uh, hold on, keep up, please. Uh, well, anyway, we'll keep up. Uh, yes, I know my internet connection is unstable, but we'll do our best. Two, so uh, strong electrolytes are ionic compounds that are soluble. Ionic compounds that are soluble. And we'll have more to say about that, but that's a very useful thing to remember. And now let's talk about this word electrolyte. Electrolyte makes us think of electricity. And so the ions that dissolve in water conduct electricity through water. And this is a very exciting thing to show you in the lab. Uh, since we don't have a lab right now, I'm going to show a video.